Commander pairings are one of the most important things to do with commanders in Rise of Kingdoms. If you have the best commanders in the game and you pair them wrong, you're basically throwing their potential out of the window. Today, I'm going to be telling you the best commander pairings for basically every troop type. This video will help you set up up to a 7 march murder ball, giving you marches along the way, and alternatives for every march I offer. So even if you are not a huge spender and you don't have some of the more extravagant commanders I mentioned in this video, you can still take away a lot of value from different pairings that I recommend for different commanders. This will be one of the most valuable videos you've ever watched, especially if you're an open field player in Rise of Kingdoms. So let's get right into what I think makes a fairly good commander pairing. I like when I'm making commander pairing to have one powerful primary commander that usually deals some form of single target damage, but they're a very stat heavy commander. And then with that stat heavy commander, I like to put a more glass cannon DPS commander who's got maybe march speed or has got like some type of debuff to go with that very stat heavy commander. And that's what I think makes a really good pairing. So when I talk about commander pairs, I'm going to be trying to put them together in such a fashion that you are benefiting from one very powerful tanky primary with a very glass cannon-like debuff heavy secondary. Starting off with infantry, the best pairing is a Guan with a CPO Africanus. The primary in this pairing doesn't matter too much. It really depends on what you want. If you want to benefit from the conquering tree and the skill tree and deal a little bit more, small, a fair amount more skill damage from Guan, then you use him as the primary. However, he will probably get targeted more. If you don't really care about Guan's skill damage and you don't really care about the Conquering Tree as much, you can use CPO who may arguably get more rage from his support tree and also doesn't get targeted as much because it's a CPO and no one really wants to hit a CPO since he's fairly tanky. I really like this pair because Guan with CPO, CPO is benefiting from Guan's silence and we know Guan's silence is mental. CPO is bringing another debuff actually, even though he's the stack commander, he's bringing a massive 30% health reduction to three targets with a massive 2000 damage factor. His rage requirement is nothing crazy either, it's the normal 1000. He's got all the stats I mentioned, he's got a bunch of march speed, which Guan does need. Guan doesn't actually have any march speed in his kit by the looks of things. And the only march speed he does get is like here, I guess when you leave a structure, you get 100% march speed for three seconds. That's not really gonna save you in a lot of situations in a big murder ball when you get 20 swarmed, but CPO's march speed may save you in those situations. CPO also has shields, and you can see Guan also benefits from getting a shield on his expertise. So I do like having an expertise Guan with CPO, or at least an expertise CPO in this pair, because CPO benefits on Guan's silence a lot. Now for a second march, I would use a Tarek Ibn Ziyad with a Sargon the Great. A lot of people may be thinking, Sargon, really? You're supposed to use him as like a fourth infantry pair. Well, I've seen a bunch of Sargon reports, just even not even with Tarek. I've seen a bunch of Tarek Sargon reports, but I've seen mainly a bunch of reports with Sargon in them, and he doesn't trade negative. Like him as a commander, he's not trading negative. If he was trading negative, then I would say, okay, he's only really good as a fourth debuff march for infantry, but he's trading positive like one to two in a lot of murder balls. I really like his crazy high damage factor if you can kind of stay on that target and nail them. But even then, if you have to pull out of a battle with him and you hit another target, basically maybe a turn or two after, you're still benefiting from that damage. And at that point, it's like instant proc damage. And then his odd debuff is just basically a Tamiris, but it's slightly better, kind of. I mean, it's the same as Tamiris, but still, it's just on a more powerful commander. And it stacks with hers, so can you complain? And then he's got a bunch of stats. He's got March Speed and Damage. He isn't a very stat-heavy commander, but he's got a lot of damaging stats. He's got a shield for what that's worth, so you could pair him with a Guan. I prefer him with Tarek, though, because Tarek is a more tanky commander. And then when he's expertise, he just gains a bunch more stats when he's doing Ord. And he also has a chance to inflict two stacks, and you get you get what I mean. Now with Tarek Ibn Ziyad, Tarek is actually also that type of commander who's very stat heavy and super damage heavy as well. Right now, Tarek is one of the highest damage commanders. Now this will change as commanders increase with power creep, because Tarek doesn't have a debuff, he may fall off before Sargon. But I mean, he's still so good right now, I would say he's worth it. 40% increased attack. Increased damage as cavalry of 10%. That is only normal attacks and counter attack. You don't gain all damage from this. He also gets march speed outside of territory. He is only a rally skill, so you would try to skip this skill, but I mean, his expertise isn't too bad. Then you've got 15% increased all damage. Just done, just straight up 15% increased all damage because it doesn't specify which troop type it is. It's all damage. And then just a chance to reduce rage. So he does have that form of a debuff, I guess. And he's just the stat heavy commander you put with Sargon. It's as simple as that. And then his expertise, you're gaining more damage factor. 
and then basically you're dealing a small AoE of 900. Can't complain. I really like Tarek with Sargon, purely because when you put Tarek with Sargon, you've got that one high stack commander, like I said, who's very tanky. With that, not as tanky, but still very powerful commander with a debuff. There is no AoE in this March combination, so you have to keep that in mind if you are using it. But Infantry doesn't have much AoE for the most part. Now, an alternative to the Guan with the CPO, if you've just gotten to Season of Conquest, you have to get CPO for an Infantry main. There's basically no way around that. And you put him with Alexander the Great. I presume if you're an Infantry main, you have an Alex, because, I mean, Alex is the only way you're going to get through Season 2 and 3, and I think he's still worth it. He's also getting a Relic soon, and Alex's March speed is just kind of insane, so I can't really complain about having an Alex with a CPO. 30% March speed placed on top of CPO's 15%. Basically means if you get into any sticky situations, you can get out of there instantly, and I really do like that about the combination. I've mentioned this story before, but I watched a CPO with an Alex outrun a Cav main who was teleporting and jumping through flags for six minutes. Kind of insane, and I mean, it's definitely a fast combination. Now, as an alternative to that Tarek with a Sargon, you can either run the Sargon with an Alex and a Guan with a CPO, or if you don't even care about Sargon at all and you just want to use Tarek Ibn Ziad. You can put him with a Harold, and that's certainly a powerful combination. Harold is a not very stat-heavy commander, but a very tanky commander with extreme AoE damage. He's got a chance to just throw his skill like Joan Prime, except you don't even need to cast the skill. And then he's also got even more counter-attack depending on how much he's being swarmed. So having Harold with Tarek is certainly a good option at the moment. Cavalry commanders, the biggest standout march is a Nevsky with a Joan Prime. That's it. Joan Prime is like the epitome of a glass cannon commander. She is extremely fast though. She gets march speed outside of territory. She's got march speed normally. She's got normal attack bonuses and cav attack. She's got no defensive stats besides a bit of health on her fourth skill. Joan Prime also has a double trigger active skill of 2000 damage factor and is also a slight buff march. Now, the reason I love Nevsky with her, A, because Nevsky is the second or the best cav commander, depending on which way you look at it, and B, Nevsky is the stat king that you need with Joan. He's got 20% march speed, 20% health, 20% attack. He's got increased defense when he gets swarmed. He's got skill damage. He's got a trigger skill damage. He's got even more cav defense. So this is just straight up defense. And he takes 1% reduced damage when he's being swarmed. Sorry, 5%, but the defense is actually an always thing. It's not a being swarmed thing. And then on top of that, Nevsky's got a debuff. So who could complain? Nevsky's expertise also gives you 5% increased normal attack and 10% chance to just gain 30% health. So many stats on this commander, it's ridiculous. Put him with a Joan, you've got the best cap march. Then, second best cap march, there are two options you could put here, and they're both fairly equal in my opinion. An XY with a Minamoto, if you've got Minamoto and you spent the money to get him. Or an XY with a William, since William I think is still a very powerful commander. But the XY with William is kind of glass cannon, because William doesn't have too many tanky stats, and XY certainly doesn't either. At least Minamoto's relic gives you that 30% defense, but a lot of Cavalry marches are quite glass cannon. As for any alternatives for the main march of the Alexander Nevsky, if you've just gone to Seasonal Conquest, you put him with a Saladin or a Minamoto. Those two commanders really work. If you're free to play, of course, you don't have Minamoto, and Saladin would be your only option if you've already got him. If not, and you just made it to Seasonal Conquest, just get Nevsky and Joan together. I mean, it's still worth getting like a 5 5 1 1 Nevsky and a 5 1 1 5 Joan. That means get her first skill and her last skill first if you can. That would be a certainly a very powerful combo, and I, sh I definitely recommend it. And I already gave you an alternative for XY, but as a possible third cap march, if you have a Saladin already maxed, then you could use Saladin with Ethelflaed. I think Ethelflaed is still very powerful. Her debuff is insane. 2,400 damage factor, basically in total, with a 30% attack and health and defense reduction, and she slows the enemies. Plus, when Saladin slows, she also gains 20% increased, just straight up all damage. So it's certainly a powerful combination. Now with archers, there are three combinations because Tamaris is here and I want to discuss Tamaris a little bit. But we'll start off with the main combo. Boudicca Prime as the primary. She is that stat AV commander you want. Lots of stats, 60% total in attack and defense here. And then 10% march speed. Plus she's also got basically a bunch of reduced skill damage taking. And she also takes even less normal attack when she's on the map. So can't complain. She also has a chance to shrug off control effects and a massive debuff with massive damage factor. Now, the person I would pair Boudicca with is Cyrus. A lot of people say, really, Cyrus, what are you smoking? And I say I'm smoking nothing because Cyrus is really good. Cyrus is that not so stat heavy commander who has a lot of damage. So Cyrus has his active skill 1400 plus 
a bunch of damage factor on his third skill, plus a bunch of damage factor on his fourth skill. And then Cyrus has two massive debuffs. Additional damage taken increase of 20%, which is all additional damage factor. And then 40% skill damage dealt reduction, which is just stupidly high. On top of that, Cyrus has a rage engine when you expertise him. He's got increased defense and increased attack after you use an active skill. And it's for three seconds. It can only trigger once every five seconds. So basically every skill cycle, you're going to get his rage engine. You are going to benefit from that 20% increased attack and defense. Certainly a powerful combination to have as a very good debuff with fairly good damage, especially if you get lucky with Cyrus skill triggers. But even if you don't, it still trades quite well. As a second march, I would be using a Henry with a YSG. Purely because Henry is super, super powerful, okay? I don't think he's going to lose his touch for maybe the next two Archer cycles. And Lilith said they're slowing down commander releases, so I think he's still worth it. Henry's got the massive skill damage taken reduction. When you expertise him, which I plan to do eventually, he takes 20% less normal attack and has a, when he's above 70% rage, deals 30% no, more normal attack. He also has revenge damage, he has Archer all damage, and he's a great rally. He's also got defense and march speed off territory and attack. Like so many stats there, he's another stat heavy commander. And then we all know YSG, the tried and true commander, massive skill damage in a circle. He's got a rage engine, so that's all you have to know about YSG. Third march is a Gilgamesh with a Tamiris. And the one thing I want to mention with Gilgamesh before I go over his skills real quick in like a flash is don't put him with any rage talents. Here's the talent build. Make sure you use this one. I personally came up with it, but I'm sure most other talent builds are very similar to this. Now, Gilgamesh is a stat heavy commander once again. He's very tanky. And once you expertise him, he even has another debuff. So he's got two major debuffs. And then we all know Tamaris as one of the debuff queens. She's basically a Sargon, except she does archers instead. And she's also got a defense passive debuff on her third skill, which I really like having in the murder ball. The only thing you're missing with this combination is march speed. So I would try and keep Gilgamesh with the triple line formation if you're using him with Tamaris. And just try and get as much march speed on these armaments as possible. Alternatives for the... Gilgamesh Tamaris do not exist, there are none. For Boudicca, you can put her with Nebu or put her with YSG, but I still like the Boudicca Cyrus more. And if you've just got the KVK Season of Conquest, you want an Archer March, Boudicca YSG is certainly fine. With Henry, of course, you're going to eventually replace that YSG with Zul Lang once he releases. And I think at that point is when you'd either consider putting the YSG with a Nebu or just benching the YSG because, I mean, eventually it's got to happen. And then I'll just use a Henry with a Zul Lang or Henry with like a Nebu or a Cyrus and then Boudicca with your Zul Lang, depending on what you want more. Now for a leadership march as a primary, this is only a seventh march by the way, I'd be using a Trajan. Trajan's buffing all your marches while dealing, I guess, a very low amount of damage factor. He's giving them 10 all your marches 25% increased skill damage for three seconds and restoring their rage. However, he takes some increased all damage, a fair amount, but it is because he is a buff march. Then here, he just has 20% more defense, and when he's outside of Alliance territory, he has 20% health. Can't complain. Third skill, he gains a bunch of troop capacity. He has a chance to deal direct damage factor when he's got more than three units, and then he also deals increased all damage when he has more than three units. This is mainly just making him a more tanky, powerful march. And then as a fourth skill, he basically just gains a bunch of defense of like 6% up to 10 times. Crazy. That's 60% defense. The longer a battle goes on, the more tanky your Trajan gets. And then once you expertise him, you basically increase the amount of skill damage that your troops can deal, and they gain a little bit more rage, plus your damage factor goes up ever slightly, but can't complain with that either. He's still such a good buff commander. Now, there are a few secondaries to him. Mulan, obviously, is the best one in my opinion. She's got a bunch of attack, health, defense. She's got march speed. She makes the Trajan even more tanky. She also does a rage reduction, and then this is where she makes it more tanky. She also has an attack bonus when she's the secondary. So you really do want her as a secondary to Trajan. And when she's reduced, she, she takes even less all damage. Basically, a very good buff march with Trajan. 20% of every single stat and 30% increased march speed for all your troops is crazy high. Another option is Ethelfled. If you're not running a Salad and Ethelfled, you put Ethelfled with Trajan. And then you've got a massive debuff to go with your Trajan's buffs. Plus, Ethelfled also benefits from using more than three troop types, as you can see here. She gains 20% increased attack, and that's not bad to have. Plus, if you go for the support tree on Trajan, which I think some players do, you can get that reducing on enemies' march speed, which makes Ethelfled even more powerful. Some baseline secondaries that could go with Trajan, you could run a Honda if you just want pure damage out of it, and to make him even more tanky so he doesn't really die. You could run a Caesar as like a very, very early stage march, because you're getting a bunch of all damage and attack and defense, especially if you double relic your Caesar. 
and Caesar has a bunch of capacity. You could also run Mehmed with Trajan, I guess, but I think Mehmed's better with different commanders. Quick thing on Mehmed, Ponda, and I guess Caesar sometimes. These three commanders can actually be used as a secondary for any of the main marches I recommended. So you could use Mehmed, for example, as a secondary to Scipio, as a secondary to Boudicca, as a secondary to Nevsky. You can also use Honda as a secondary to any of those commanders. You can use Caesar as a secondary to XY, which is really good. Caesar as a secondary to Scipio is really nice. I tried Caesar with Boudicca, it's not bad, and Caesar with Henry isn't bad. So these combinations are also options if you are missing some of the commanders I mentioned, because some are quite hard to get. So for your seven march murder ball, the best murder ball you can currently get, the two infantry marches you run is Scipio Africanus with a Guan and a Karak Ibn Ziad with a Sargon the Great. Now for the cavalry, you'll run an Alexander Nevsky and a Joan Prime, and then you'll run an XY with either Minamoto, William, or Chandra Gupta, who is someone I forgot to mention. Quick thing, Chandra Gupta just has a bunch of damage bonuses, He's fairly tanky in some ways, he's got some health, he also has a bunch of debuffs, and you have to expertise him. For archers, you will run three marchers in my opinion, and that will be a Boudicca Prime with a Cyrus. You will not run Boudicca Artemisia, I don't think it's as good as people say it is, if you're running a 7 march murder ball. You will run a Henry with a YSG, just for that pure, fairly high damage, and a Gilgamesh Primary with a Tamira Secondary, making sure you're using the talent that I spoke about. If you're curious about any of the Archer Commanders, I've got guides for literally every single one that will be on the end screen of the video, and I'll talk about that in some future upcoming videos if I'm going to make guides for other trip types as well. And then for your 7th March, you'll run a Trajan with preferably a Mulan to earn the buffs from her active skill and also to benefit from her debuffs, or a Trajan with an Ethelfled if that's something you are interested in, because Ethelfled does have more debuffs, and she's not really in the 7 ball unless you want to run a Saladin with an Ethelfled and maybe drop an Archer March or drop an infantry march. Now I've basically given you all the marches you would need to set up a good seven march murder ball. So you now know every single march that is pretty much good nowadays in the open field. If a march that you like isn't on there, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll be able to, I guess, include it in a next tier list if I really do like your ideas. And there are a bunch of alternative marches that I offered. So if you're missing any commanders, you can try mix and match with them. If you enjoyed the video, I'm going to tell you a quick thing. I'm starting a restart account in June. And that restart account is going to be quite insane. I'm going to be using only siege units. So if you want to check that out, all I ask is to subscribe to the channel. I do thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next one.